Good morning. Welcome uh, to uh, today's devotion. Let me just go ahead and jump right in. Prayer is something that Scripture instructs we should be doing ceaselessly. Yet for many, prayer is an afterthought or a last resort. Christians fail to realize just how much God will accomplish through them when they pray continuously. James, the brother of Jesus, writes, the effective prayer of a righteous person can accomplish much. Today, as we continue our journey with Jesus through Passion Week, I want us to take a look at one of Jesus' teachings on prayer and faith. So follow along in your Bibles as I read from Mark 11, 12 through 26. On the next day, when they had left Bethany, Jesus became hungry. Seeing at a distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see it, if perhaps he would find anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples were listening. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were buying and selling in the temple, and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry merchandise through the temple. And he began to teach and say to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a robber's den. The chief priests and the scribes heard this, and began seeking how to destroy him, for they were afraid of him, for the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. <clears throat> when evening came, they would go out of the city. As they were passing by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots up. Being reminded, Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered, saying to them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted to him. Therefore I say to you, All things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and they will be granted to you. Whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your transgressions. As I mentioned above, I'm going to address prayer and faith, two important issues today relating to the Christian lifestyle. First, I want to address how we are to live by faith each day. Remember, Paul encourages the believer to walk by faith and not by sight. As the chronology of Passion Week unfolds, Jesus and the disciples are walking from Bethany to the temple on Monday morning. Jesus, seeing a fig tree and leaf, found no figs on the tree. Jesus then cursed the tree. Why curse this tree for not producing any fruit, since it was out of season? The fig tree looked good. It looked as if it would have fruit. Many Christians are like this fig tree. Some Christians will often look good as they make the appearance of doing Christ's work, but they never produce any fruit for God's kingdom. We must remember that Christians are not called to just look good, Christians are called to produce fruit for Jesus' kingdom. Christians are to produce fruit regardless of the season. Paul charges Timothy and us to preach the word, to be ready in season and out of season. We are only able to produce fruit when we live in obedience to Jesus. Jesus admonishes us with these words, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Those who will follow Jesus must be ready to proclaim God's good news at any time, whenever the Spirit of God commands it. We are to be ready to give testimony of the hope that is in us through a relationship with Jesus at all times. Remember, the axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. How is our ability to produce fruit for God's kingdom connected with prayer and faith? They are connected because our relationship with Jesus is undergirded by our faith in him and our relationship with Jesus is strengthened and nurtured by consistent, continual conversation with Jesus, which we call prayer. When Peter observes the condition of the fig tree on Tuesday morning, Jesus begins his teaching moment about prayer by connecting all that is about to follow with faith in God. Have faith in God, Jesus asserts. Faith in God is indispensable for the believer. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that he is and that God is a rewarder of those who seek him. Faith in God through Jesus is the foundation upon which everything else in the Christian's life is built. In order for our prayers to be more than just words, there must be something that we have faith in which we believe is listening to what we pray. The something is God. Jesus encourages us to not doubt and believe in our heart that what we pray and ask of God will be granted. Notice that there are two things of which we must be aware if we are to enjoy the blessings of a successful prayer life. These two things are, first, believe you have received what you're asking for. And second, forgive anyone who has done wrong to you and by implication seek the forgiveness of those you have wronged. I also believe that forgiveness is impossible without faith. Consider the post-resurrection encounter between Jesus and his disciples in which Jesus commissioning the eleven charges, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Further, the Christian is challenged, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Forgiving others is the hardest thing to do as a Christian, yet it is an imperative of our faith. We are called to make a difference here in this world while we are here. We are here to be salt and light. We are here to produce good and lasting fruit so that the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Perhaps the open secret to producing good and lasting fruit is rooted in our faith and prayer, which strengthens our relationship with God through Jesus and thereby empowers us to forgive. Nothing is more transformative in this world than knowing you are forgiven by God through Jesus and then sharing that forgiveness with others. Pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for the faith you have planted within us. We thank you for Jesus, through whom we enjoy the blessings of forgiveness. We thank you for the courage you endow us with that emboldens us to forgive others. And we thank you for enabling us to share your son, Jesus, with all that we meet each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be strong. Be healthy, and God bless you until the nets are full. I'm Pastor Jim Rand. Have a great day.